The flu run. Okay. In compliance with the open public meeting law, I wish to state that on November 23rd, 2022, notice of the meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, the Upper Township website, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up to and until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made part of the minutes of this meeting. Would everyone please stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, without indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's going to be hard. Almost called you Barbara. <laughs> Joanne, will you please call the roll? Mr. Here. Mrs. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Here. Uh, present. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the November 14th regular and closed session minutes. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Okay, moving on to. Uh, Governor Body. John, do you have anything for us tonight? Yes. Uh, with the Christmas season upon us, there are many people within our township, within our county, who are struggling and in need. There are some programs available in the township. One in particular is a program sponsored by the Knights of Columbus at St. Maximilian Colby Parish, where people in need can apply for assistance and that assistance works in conjunction with the Marine Corps Toys for Tots program. So the Knights are able to supply not only food packages, but toys for the children. If you know of anyone in need, please refer them to St. Maximilian Colby. They can go up, they can fill out an application, and packages for their Christmas will be delivered to them. Uh, and I believe it is going to be this year on the 17th. If uh, you're not in need, and in any way that you can help one of our local organizations, one of our local churches, one of our local community organizations to help others in need, it certainly would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, just, Kim's not with us this evening. She is home ill, so we are very long. Mark, do you have anything for us? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a couple things here. First and uh, foremost, I'd like to send uh, my condolences to the Casabone family. Um, Mr. Cospone Sr., uh, Chick Sr., um, was, was a member of this community and you know, a proud supporter of a lot of the things that this township did. Um, his son, Chick Jr., was a football coach for Upper Township, uh, supporting our youth um, for multiple years, um, hundreds of kids. And his grandson was also a, a, a product of that um, program. So I would like to send our condolences to that family. Um, second, um, I'd like to just give an update on our leaf collection. Um, so far this year, uh, since the 14th of November, um, we've collected 1.1 million pounds of leaves off the streets, um, and that equals 550 tons. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a, a pretty big feat in itself in a short period of time that these guys have been out sucking these leaves up. Um, the first go around is coming to an end this week. They'll start their second go around uh, most likely the second week in December, which is the fifth, and they're going to start their second go around to pick up uh, any extras that are left. Um, last week, I had uh, me and um, committee woman Hayes had the um, privilege to go down and, and attend the League of Municipality meetings down in um, Middle Township um, in Wildwood at, at the Mud Hen. Um, and two of the, two of the speakers down there um, were kind of near and dear to us. Um, one was the uh, Coast Guard Foundation. Um, our own uh, Jeffrey Pearson is involved in that. He's the chairman down there. Um, they do a lot of good things for our Coast Guard community. Um, we are a Coast Guard community for the Gateway to the Cape. Um, and they were looking for sponsorships for their upcoming events that they're having. Um, and their, their sponsorship, um, the Early Bird, is I think $1,063. So I'd like to entertain a motion to look into that to see if we could uh, potentially become a sponsor for that. Um, we are the gateway to the Cape, and I think it's a, it, it's a good, good thing for our community. And I'll just uh, recommend that we put that under new business. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, the next thing, um, also the, the second speaker down there at the, at the league um, was from the New Jersey Governor's um, Commission on uh, Veteran Affairs. Um, they have a, a, it's called a We Value Our Veterans Community Award um, that looks to, to you know, you, you're, you get these points um, based off of how well we respond to our, our veterans. Um, and I think it's, an, it, it's, a, it's something that we should look into. Um, and I would like to, I don't know if this goes on a new business or not, but I'd like to head up a, a committee um, to look into this. It's, it's no cost to the township. Um, it works uh, hand in hand with our business community, which I think is a good thing, and also our veterans groups um, in the county. Um, new business. Okay. And the last. Would you like me to title that one? What is that? The, uh, the New Jersey Governor's Veterans thing. Um, and the last thing I have here, but certainly not least, is uh, also down there um, when we were at the League of Municipalities and also uh, some other times that I have been down in uh, Middle Township, I had to, um, the honor to, to, to meet a gentleman who owns No Limits Boxing Academy. Mm -hmm. um, and he does great things for the underprivileged youth in our community, um, whether it's you know, having, having help with homework, providing them with food, um, he runs a great program uh, down in Middletown, Rio Grande, called No Limits Boxing Academy, uh, and they're holding a free, uh, it's, it's geared towards 6th uh, six through 12-year-olds, 12, 12 um, a No Limits Boxing Academy. It's a wrestling program they're putting on, a professional wrestling program. We're going to have food for the kids. It's free to the community. Uh, December 10th uh, at 6 p.m., they're going to be holding that down, down in Rio Grande. So it's, it, it, they're on Facebook, No Limits Boxing Academy. They're a great, great organization. Um, and they're doing great things for our community. I, I traveled to with the committee with Pancos to No Limits a couple of months ago, and it's pretty, pretty special place. I surprised something that if you haven't looked at it, it'd be a good thing to look at. And that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Newman. Do you have uh, any yeah, just one thing, Mayor. Um, uh, free rabies clinic. Saturday, January 21st, 2023, and Saturday, February 25th, 2023. They'll be on our uh, website one of these days, and the Free Rabies Clinic, and it's always held at the Shore Veterinary Animal Hospital, 73 Hope Corson Road, and uh, in Seville, it's right there uh, on the corner of the Hope Corson and Route 50. And um, just a word of advice for anyone who would like to travel south on the Thanksgiving weekend, which I did, do not do it. <laughs> uh, the worst traffic I ever experienced in my entire life. So, uh, that's why I go north. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all I have. All right, th thank you, Mr. Newman. Uh, the only thing I have is, uh, I guess, uh, we received notice over the weekend that Bill Brown passed away. Bill Brown. Uh, in July, turned 99 years old, but Bill Brown served on our uh, local planning board for over 50 years. In 2014, he retired off the planning board, and we did a resolution honor him. So, just if everybody could keep his. He's also our representative of the Pine Heights Commission. Yes. For many years as well. He did public service for a long time. So, if everybody can just keep his family in their thoughts and prayers over the holiday season, that would be good. All right, moving right along here. Uh, Gary, do you have anything for us tonight? Uh, a few things. First of all, um, the Coast Guard, uh, my troop, my Boy Scout troop, is Troop 73, which is the West Cape May troop. Um, I would say about 60% of the scouts that are in there are from Coast Guard families, and they do a phenomenal job as far as uh, God, family, and country bringing those boys into, into society. So uh, hats off to the, the committee for supporting uh, the Coast Guard. Uh, Josh Mikado's um, no Limits Academy is a fantastic um, program for, again, for underprivileged youths, for youths. Um, I've been to that uh, facility, and it is, it is, it is truly That's amazing cool. once you open those, those doors. Um, from, from Paul, we're going to hear from uh, some of the n noise issues we have over at the, uh, at the uh, uh, Beasley Point Development Group. Um, Paul, I'd like to just touch base on the work that we're doing with our grants. Paul's been the legs. If you look at the resolutions, four, five, six, 
and seven at the guidance of uh, committee woman Hayes. We've been uh, um, pursuing the ADA grants and small city grants. Um, we could talk about the Amanda Field lights that we're that we're pursuing as well. So we'll, we'll bring that into focus again. Um, GIF. So my personnel uh, manager, the HR manager, and myself and the EMS uh, chief have been filling the requirements for the GIF for our insurance requirements for our mandatory classes. Um, let's see what we got here. Committeeman um, Coggins I gave you the update relative to the court position that's open. So we've, we've uh, continued to receive um, applications and we're working through the personnel process to identify some, uh, some personnel that are needed in the courts. Uh, working with uh, Committeeman uh, Pankos on some time management and some HR systems, some, some computer systems internally to try to, to try to detail some of the anomalies that we're looking through with personnel issues as far as uh, maintenance of our personnel staff. Uh, and the balance of the issues I have, Mayor, are just all personnel related. So we do have a bunch of closed session personnel matters to, to, uh, to address. I also would like to say that uh, my wife and I had Frog Hollow Cheesecake, which was very good. So, Rod Hollow's <laughs> right there on 50. Route 50, isn't it? Yeah, delicious. Yep, so, I wanted to get that in for you. All right, thank you, Gary. Um, Joanne, do you have anything for us tonight? Dan, do you have anything for us? Thanks. Paul, do you have anything for us? Uh, just to follow up on uh, the very we have gotten some uh, a complaint regarding uh, some of the demolition work out in BL England and after some review of uh, their operations and uh, some of our ordinance requirements. Our ordinance was really set up for us you know, to talk about no demolition on Saturday, just more for how the ordinance was set up and up here, with more for residential properties. Doing demolition work with neighboring residential properties and didn't really foresee a large, over a thousand acre property facility that had demolition activities on that. Um, but we did get a request, and so I just wanted to feel the committee out on um, how, how we want to approach that. Uh, we have in the past, like when the um, Army Corps comes and does part of our beach bill, we do give them a resolution authorization for you know, working 24 <coughs> 7. I did talk to the um, operator you know, heading up the cleanup operation that dealing with, and they, they increased some activity where they're on some time critical work and they're trying to remove some foundations uh, for some work that's anticipated to be needed to be done in the early spring um, time for, for a reconstruction. <coughs> timeline crunch, they can move away so move to some less noise free activities on Saturdays, um, but they, they would still like to try to keep the Saturdays open just to maintain their work schedule. Uh, but I just wanted to find out the community's feeling <coughs> and approach. We would have to prove that by resolution, but we did. I mean, we've done it for the dredging operations before. We've done it for uh, the mining operations if there has been night work going on or one thing or another. So I had a discussion earlier with Paul. And like when we did that ordinance about the demolition on Saturdays, it was mostly, I think, uh, with the resort community in mind and the residential the living. Residential <coughs> Yeah, it's a, 
Well, this is actually qualifies as an industrial, not even if, uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, gentlemen, are on it, but. I, I probably live, at least up here in this, this, the dais, I probably live the closest and without a doubt, you can hear it. Um, but also, you always heard the plan. It was a 24 hour operation that made noise, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for years and years. Um, and in this particular case, I, I would be uh, very uh, uh, open to having a resolution to allow them to continue on because the work down there that they're doing is important. It's important to the township. Not that residents' uh, comfort level isn't important, but I think we can do something to move. This is a temporary situation, and we can probably, uh, especially with the demo work, come in and uh, address something further when they go to start construction, which is still a long way down the road. Can we limit the hours of operation on a Saturday to like 8 to 4? Or? I think we would be appropriate that we would put limitations on the hours and you know, exclude holidays. seems to me that if I understood you correctly uh, they're doing this Saturday work to get caught up for another piece of work that needs to be done at a certain time yes so with that being said there may be a way to put a cap on the number of days or the number of Saturdays they'll be working so we can at least assure the residents of that area who are you know being disturbed that this won't be an ongoing thing this is going to continue for the next four Saturdays or two Saturdays or whatever it may be. Uh, and then if, it, if there's any more required, we will require them to come to us for an additional waiver. I mean, I mean that, that's kind of what I think. Maybe you give them to February, in the end of February, the end of March, as a, you know, put some kind of a cap on it. Yeah. yeah. As we visit, it, at, you know, as, as the weather starts to change, and give them the time frame. Let's give it until March 1st then, the resolution, and that way we can order. Please, like I said, then you have some control on it, and you can revisit it and tweak it. Did they tell you how long they needed? Because of they're, what they're doing is they're removing foundations, mm -hmm. and they honestly don't have a good feel for, on some of the sizes of the foundations and the extent that they have to remove stuff and stuff. So it's, it's, it's kind of, to some degree, an unknown of how easily that concrete is going to come out uh, for it. But mm -hmm. It is time sensitive that they can get rid of some of this concrete and build coal pile. Yeah, you know, this, this might be something that they can do just like they do when they're putting utilities in where you have rocky areas. They can go in and drill and blast and you can get it done very quickly, in and out and done. You know. Paul and I talked earlier, you know, maybe, maybe instead of a jackhammer, the footings just do cleanup work on that kind of day, but you still have backup alarms and all that, which I'm sure you can hear the backup alarms. You can really hear when you pull a piece of metal off. <laughs> yeah. So. So there's not an easy solution, so it's... Are they asking for the whole, they're asking for the full weekend or just the Saturdays? To Saturdays. Saturday. Do you want me to work with uh, Gary, Dan, and we'll craft a resolution for the next meeting? Yes. And have something for the next meeting? Yes, please. Uh, the other thing is, I will update the committee. You know, we do have four resolution items uh, on the consent agenda for the small cities grant um, that we did have a public hearing um, last week or the week before on that application. The, the public hearing just did many different things in that because the Small Cities Grant encompasses uh, a large and very broad uh, gamut of what we can apply for. We are looking at a more focused project. At this point, we're looking at doing ADA enhancement at the playground facilities at Amanda's Field, um, replacing part of the structure and creating a hard surface access path between the handicap parking, the pavilions, the swing areas, and playground structures to create a true uh, handicap accessible experience um, for that. And that's what, the, what we're utilizing that small cities grant for. It's not a 100% grant. Uh, there is a 30% match that the township will have to uh, pay as part of that grant process. And 
that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Barbara, do you have anything for us? I have nothing there. Thank you. All right. Uh, Okay, we do have uh, one report from Public Works, so I'd like to make a motion. We accept that. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 And now we have a climate change presentation. So I will let you go and introduce yourself and go from there. Township and New Jersey DEP to put together a climate change related hazard vulnerability assessment. Apologize for the mouthful there. Um, and we've been working on this project now for a good number of months uh, and in collecting data and have been coordinating with the township and uh, with New Jersey DEP. And since this report is approaching approximately 100 pages, I'm going to try to keep it short and give you the real right readers digest version of where we are at this point. Uh, the project is being funded uh, by New Jersey DEP uh, for the report preparation component of it um, as part of the Resilient NJ program. Uh, the township is also funding a uh, portion of the project as part of the uh, public and stakeholder engagement process. And I'll just point out that a climate resilience strategy is now a requirement by the state for climate endorsement. So this vulnerability assessment looks at a number of different items, uh, including current and future threats to the municipality, uh, looking at how they relate to future development, uh, where development has yet to occur, um, identifying critical facilities and infrastructure, uh, identifying the impacts of natural hazards, and then providing strategies, design standards, and outlining a specific policy statement. And so the report looks at a handful of different natural um, threats, uh, including increased temperatures, drought, wildfire, sea level rise, precipitation, flooding, hurricanes, and tropical weather. Largely, this focuses on the flooding and fires, uh, since a lot of these things are and so we look at a number of different items. We look at vulnerable populations in relation to these items. Uh, this can include anything from the seasonal tourist population, um, but also areas of low income, uh, areas, uh, concentrations of mobile homes, uh, younger, older populations, uh, et cetera. Uh, we look at community facilities and infrastructure and where they are in relation to these threats, uh, natural resources and how they could be impacted by these threats, um, as well as future development and how it could be addressed going forward. And as you can see on the slide there, one thing we look at in terms of existing conditions is flood risk. Uh, nearly half the town is for, uh, exposed to the 100-year floodplain, um, and an additional uh, 1,300 build, uh, 1,367 buildings are in the 500-year floodplain. And we look at um, different risks from different hurricanes. Uh, we, Category one through four, we look at um, past risk, which is uh, on this map you can see the extent of the sandy storm surge. And at the request of New Jersey DEP, we look at projections that go to the year 2100. Uh, and as part of this analysis, we took a real middle of the road approach, looking at a moderate scenario, um, which shows a 50% chance of sea level rise um, anywhere between 2.8 feet to 3.9, and actually, the, I believe, moderate emissions is about 3.3, or as shown in this map, a three foot uh, rise in sea level. Um, this results in more instances of high tide or sunny day flooding. Um, and then, on the next slide, when this is combined with something like a 100 year storm, which we seem to be having 100 year storms every couple of years, um, you see the um, extent of potential flood. And so we're looking at that as well and to see what infrastructure and um, where the development is in relation to those flood events. And from there, we're taking those findings and we're developing a list of action items um, to go forward uh, and to, to help improve the township's 
resilience through items such as programming, development regulations, planning, uh, master planning, uh, communications, and uh, engineering solutions. And from there, the other things that work and I are taking place is we are working with the township to prepare a story map that will take this information and summarize it. Um, so instead of having people directed necessarily to the 100 plus page report, uh, they'll be directed to a summary, um, and obviously the report can be provided as well, but this helps to distill that down and provide that summary. And there's also a survey attached to that so that people can provide their own input that can go into that final report and help identify things that maybe we could not see at that 30,000 foot level. Um, and so that information will be incorporated into the report as well. Um, this presentation was previously brought before the planning board, and um, this is the more, like I said, Reader's Digest version. So there's a little bit more detail, um, but ultimately the findings of that final report will be sent back to the planning board, incorporating all the comments that come in. And just to follow up, the reason, we'll be putting the, uh, that story map on the website probably tomorrow afternoon. Um, we'll, that survey will collect that data that report and uh, that will become an appendix. We're going to kind of leave it open for the next two months and then we'll attach those survey results as part of an appendix to the final report, uh, which that's, that's the link to that story map and the report will both be on the township's uh, web page this week. So we'll be looking for that kind of input. And just to give the committee a quick look, when you look at what the um, two foot to three foot sea level, projections on the flood hazard map. The, the, our existing flood hazard map is more encroaching into uh, the development than those levels of sea level rise. But as Nick said, once you start seeing that increase in where the sea level rise is, the flooding that happens gets more frequent. And we can see that in our low-lying areas that they're seeing more frequent sunny day flooding it's like the entire so it's like every other um, full moon cycle that we're getting extreme flood tides. So it's just going to really help the planning board and the township committee focus and uh, work more Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Jolene, you're up. Please call the roll. Mr. Yes. 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 Paul, do you just want to, for the record, give a brief uh, synopsis of what this is? Everybody up here, all right? Wait, and then we'll open to the public. Just one question, uh, Paul, for the benefit of the uh, members of the public who have an interest in the lighting component of the ordinance. When will that be readdressed? Uh, that was uh, 
sent back to the planning board. They had a meeting, a subcommittee was put together at the planning board meeting. Subcommittee was scheduled to meet this Thursday, but that's being canceled and it's probably going to be pushed off till after the first of the year just because of the holiday season. So this will actually be done under a new ordinance? Yes. Yes. There's just, unlike, you know, we did make some tweaks in this ordinance and the other ordinance that is scheduled for the December 12th meeting, it just was virtually impossible to try to meet, you know, that create a subcommittee. There was two types of window, yeah. There was two types of window to, to bring an ordinance for committee to introduce tonight to have uh, adopted in December. So yeah. it felt better to be prudent and since we had the public comment to take the public comment and let's do it properly and, and have the subcommittee really look at it. So uh, like the mayor said as with the holidays, you know, it's, it was hard to get a, a date between Thanksgiving and the New Year yeah. with all the holidays and schedules and stuff like that. The planning board does meet again third this Thursday, but that's just it's, you know there's, it's going to take a couple subcommittee meetings to get it to get back in front sure. of the planning board. So instead of trying to rush it, it's going to slow down and try to do it right. Makes sense. Yep. So at this time we'll open it up to the public. Is anyone in the public like to comment on ordinance number 26 of 2022? Okay, hearing no public comment and seeing no public comment, we will close the public portion and move for inter motion to introduce. Uh, no, uh, I'll adopt. motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance number 26 of 2022. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, I'll make a motion that we introduce ordinance number 28 of 2022 with a public hearing uh, and possible final adoption scheduled for December 12th, 19th, 19th. Yes. December 19th. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Bobby? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Make a motion to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Coppins? Yes. Mr. Newman? Obstein. Mr. Pantos? Yes. Mayor Yes. Mr. Harris. Number 19, the JIF 20.2 dividend announcement. <coughs> Who knows about this? Who That's has a copy of that? Do you? Want to just speak to it? Somebody. You want me to? Yeah, please. Um, as you know, we do this every year with uh, the JIF uh, when they have excess funds, um, they divvy it up. And we have three choices. Um, this year we have $47,298. There are three choices. Um, we can take the credit, the $47,000 credit, towards our JIF assessment for 2023. Um, we can take the check. Um, for $47,000 from the JIF, or um, we can apply it to our aggregate um, excess loss contingency fund. This is the option that we've used for the past few years. Um, we have $134,606.98 in our loss contingency fund um, currently. And um, we if we the committee in the past has recommended that we keep additional funds in that um, that uh, aggregate access, uh, access loss fund um, only because there are certain expenses, certain legal expenses or whatnot that we felt we should keep that. Um, we had a couple of settlements we paid out of it and a few other odds and ends, yes. So we've actually depleted that fund. We have depleted it. We have used it. What do you have in that fund now, Barbara? 134,000. Uh, pending litigation, Dan, what are you? So there are a few personnel matters pending. Uh, I think they're still a long ways off. Uh, I can't really give you an estimate on what we, I mean, right now we think there were zero, of course. 
understand it. I'm always supportive of having a hefty reserve. Uh, I think it makes good sense, and certainly um, you'd rather have it not <coughs> than you not have it. And I believe, if I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think you can um, even move some of that money around in the future as far as can you, can you later take that out of the excess fund and apply it to another um, sure about okay. that. Um, well, then assume that you're going to leave there at least for the immediate future, but it is for the benefit of the township. Yeah, I, you know, one suggestion, uh, and I too am a believer in having a, a fairly healthy reserve, especially when we have ongoing litigation. However, I, although I will not be here, I think that you're going to be facing a very difficult budget as we get into the year 2023. The uh, opportunity to use either all or a portion of that and apply it to a credit for next year's insurance payment might be a way to take a little bit of stress off the budget. So if we can take, you know, like uh, some from column A and some from column B, uh, it might help things along as we get into next year's budget. We can do that as well. We can, to, we can set, you know, a certain amount to the contingency fund and then a certain amount to be credited um, or even refunded to the township. To, to, to uh, go along with John's point, what about what, the what ifs, okay? What if we have 134000 in there right now? What if we have a settlement that comes in October of 2023 and it's $150,000? Where do we get the extra $20,000? We have to come up with it. We have to come up with it. Out of our current budget. Budget, budget order. Well, do we have to make a decision on it tonight? Yeah, because they don't want to know by December 7th, it looks like. No date or December Yeah, that's 15th. Yeah. I will tell you that the last settlement bumped up your deductible. So we went from 20000 to 50000 Yeah, there were a couple of the pending matters that we now have deductible of $50,000 that we're trying to meet. So, if, if we settle. I mean, so that's just so that's, the deductible. Well, I think. No, it's the legal bill. So that answers our question. We should probably put it in our reserve. Okay. We put it we'll in our reserve. reserve. Yeah, I tend to agree. Although I understand what you're saying, John. It's just I, how hard it, and can we look in the back if we have to? Can we look and see how hard it is to get out of the reserve if we want it to? I know that. I mean, really, any legal expenses we can use this reserve for. Annual expenses. Legal expenses. Oh, legal expenses. And there, there is actually. Why don't we get a few more questions answered and we'll do it in the December 12th meeting? Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yes. Yes, agreed. So, yeah, we if we get. We, we're not going to take the check. No. <laughs> no. But so, yeah, if you can find out how hard it is to get out of there if we need to use it for. What? And then maybe we can actually take a look at our legal expenses pending this evening. And then we had two things we moved to. Uh, New business here. Yeah. Right. The, the one was the Coast Guard community uh, looking for a sponsorship. I think the early, if you get in there early, it's one thousand sixty-three dollars. It's their lowest sponsorship. Again, uh, it's the uh, Cape May County Coast Guard Community Foundation. Okay, Jeffrey Pearson is the chair. Um, a bunch of local people. Uh, Zachary Palumbo is on the board of trustees. Is that a motion? To, do we have the money to? Yeah, I mean, if, if we need to move well, we, money around for the, I'm for the a, project. I'm asking, yeah, you think it's. Oh, do we have it in the line item? Well, we don't have a line item. I mean. When's this due by? Looks like December 15th is the early bird.
we can we can budget can money. I think it's something that we are a Coast Guard community group. We do have people that are residents of Upper Township on this this uh, board. Yep. Um, I am sitting here looking at two or three of them. Katrina McSorley is one. Uh, Zachary Plumbo. We have you know obviously we are a host community. Right. I think it's something we should do. And I have no problem supporting that. Let's, if we could, if we, if we go ahead and start moving forward with this, but let, let's let, once again, it's due by the 15th. Yep. We can do this on the 12th. Okay. Make sure she can get some money. Yep. To, okay. To Sounds good. Me. That's a motion, right? Yep. I'll second that. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Um, and the second one is the New Jersey Governor's uh, Community Award. It's the Veterans. Uh, we value our veterans community award. I would like to uh, form a committee with me and committee woman Hayes to uh, make sure we can reach this goal of becoming a uh, veterans community. That's another thing, if I could take a look at that. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, well, I'd like to be on that too. I mean, would you uh, considering that I'm probably the only veteran sitting up here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have this, uh, I, when I was away, I described it earlier. Uh, there's a lot of these type things. What they're looking to do is they want to provide parking spots for Purple Heart recipients and disabled veterans. I saw a lot of those in yeah. some of the communities down south. And I think that's, a, once again, a noble cause, and we're very veterans-oriented, as we just talked about supporting the Coast Guard. Uh, you know, so I, I would, I would uh, like to second Mark's motion that we move forward with this. You could probably use one of those in Strathmere. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Purple Heart? Thing. Purple Heart. Yeah. yeah. There you go. It'd be nice to have them in all our shopping centers and make it part yep. of our site plan. Yes. Yeah. I know. I know. Uh, Committee Woman Hayes is. You know, she's she's very much in touch with our business community, um, and that's why I, I was recommending her. In, in, okay. right, mm -hmm. If you and her want to do it, on. Thank you. Appreciate that. I second that motion. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Uh, I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated in full in the minutes of this meeting. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 At this time, uh, we're going to open up to the public. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak? Anyone else? Yeah. 
memberships from uh, representatives from the um, A Harbor Watershed Association, and then of course, just general volunteers in other township and staff here. Uh, as you know, we hope to make this project uh, uh, one that we do twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall, until all of the duties um, are covered. I also would like to happily report that um, Alma of John Farms, who generously donated the beach plums, uh, she and Juliet Schlepper, who led this whole effort to look at the uh, Williams Avenue uh, plantings that we did in the spring, and many of them are doing really well, so we're very pleasantly surprised about that. The last thing I just wanted to comment on, it was a very interesting discussion about having a resolution for exceptions for uh, noise production under commercial operations in residential areas. I think that's a reasonable approach. I specifically feel that it's very important that you uh, are requiring the applicant or, you know, to demonstrate critical business need in order to have the exception from the noise ordinance and critical business need demonstrated to your satisfaction so that uh, this doesn't just become Oh, I'm going to request it and business as usual. So I think the approach is reasonable. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, if you could get those questions to us in writing, and we will craft a response and get back to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. If you send, want to send it to my email direct, sure. then we'll memorialize your answers for you and kind of get back to you. Be directed to her if she wants to. Once I hit send, it goes to the world, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah, they were great questions. I appreciate it. Yeah. Did you go to the open house by any chance? I did. Okay. Were any of those questions answered? Uh, <laughs> not, not exactly. Because uh, that's probably who I'm going to forward, absent the township questions, that'll be forwarded to them. I mean, we might not be able to answer all them, but we will answer them to the best of our ability. It's, if we can answer them, we will. Anyone else? Okay, at this time we're going to close the public portion and entertain a motion to go into closed session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are personnel, contract negotiation for the following, annual appointments, Cape Assist, and living sure I also include in my motion the estimated time and circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session will be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussion will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Gary, do you have a card with you? Do I have one, sir? Your cards. 